Hello and welcome to Beach View, our podcast about different stuff and or things. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? We're talking about detective fiction. Ooh. So we've already talked about a genre. We talked about dystopian. True. On a previous podcast. And I was thinking earlier, you know, I have things to say about detective <laughs> fiction. And I have a podcast on which to say them. So <laughs> here right. we are. All right. I want to hear what you have to say about detective fiction. Well, you know, first... uh Brief explainer, in case someone doesn't know. Yeah. It's a subset of the mystery genre, in which detective investigates some sort of crime, usually a murder, and, you know, usually they solve it, you know, and go through all that whatnot. Uh, it's a very famous genre from works like Sherlock Holmes and uh, Agatha Christie. Yes. To the dozens of police procedurals that have been on TV for decades now. <laughs> yeah all the csis and the uh... yep. ncis's law and yes, orders yes. and yeah tons of them yes and you know you got your like whodunits your murder mysteries you know just various like a detective comes and solves a crime or doesn't solve the crime as the case may be yes and drama ensues yeah so uh yeah you got any examples you particularly want to get into or bring up? I mean, there's so many. Of course, like, I always go to um, books. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know I do. So I think, like, um, I started with that genre when I was younger. And I think I talked about this before, but um, the Encyclopedia Brown series. And I didn't read, like, the whole series, but I, re I remember reading distinctly like when I was younger probably like I want to say like maybe fifth grade like sixth grade like that kind of age and so I don't if if you're not familiar it's like this kid and they call him Encyclopedia Brown is like he solves like crimes and mysteries and stuff but it's like really silly things like you know somebody stole a elephant from the circus and he's trying to figure out who it is you know what I mean like it's just like yeah. goofy goofy kind of stuff um but I used to really um like those because it's it's like a logical thing that you have to like put together the the clues and figure out who it is and anyway so that's like started way back when with that and then more recently like every once in a while I'll read like a detective you know book here and there I don't have any like examples off the top of my head but <laughs> I figured out that I don't really like police detective stuff or serial killer stuff <laughs> but uh, but other uh, other topics I'll do better but I I find that like police detective stuff is just a little too like I don't know crimey and not, <laughs> not like um not like more of the I guess mystery logical like putting clues together kind of thing I don't know why it tends to be that way in my opinion, I like more of the, you know, I guess, I guess like maybe like Da Vinci Code kind of um, style where it's like not necessarily like a detective, but it's like a person trying to figure out the next step and, and you know, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because that is like part of it and of mystery fiction in general. Is yeah. That like, you know, sometimes you're there you know, with the detective trying to figure out what's happening based on the clues. That's not a part of all detective fiction. Right. Or mystery fiction broadly. Yeah. But yeah, that it can be part of the fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting you bring up um, Encyclopedia Brown, because that's actually a rather, like, big in story genre is, like, uh, kids and young adult yes. detective fiction. Yeah, it, I think it used to not be. Like, I, I feel like, um, and I know I've said this before, too, that in books that we've come such a long way in, like, young reader fiction, like, I feel like back in the day, there were, of course, there were a lot of books, but there weren't, like, these huge, you know, popular, like, series for that specific genre, you know, a long time ago. 
but Encyclopedia Brown was one of those, and I remember, like, reading it, not a lot of people knew what it was, like, at, at least, like, at school, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I do think, I mean, I don't know, is it still around? Is it still popular? I don't know. I was aware of it tangentially when I was younger somehow. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look it up and see if it's still around. But yeah, I used to jam to some encyclopedia. Uh, there's also stuff like the Boxcar Children. Or, oh, yeah. Um, Nancy Drew. Yes, I forgot about Nancy Drew. Yeah, um, I wasn't really too into Nancy Drew. I mean, I, I never why. read either of those, but I remember seeing them in the library as a kid. Yeah, I think I read like one or two of the Boxcar Children books. I was kind of like, eh, I don't, know. I don't know why it didn't really like, I didn't get into it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, some other examples: Sherlock Holmes, obviously. Yep. <laughs> There's been tons of adaptations of Sherlock Holmes, given that he's a popular character and in public domain at this point. Yeah. And has been for a while. Yeah. Uh, some Batman stories are like this. Uh, the Batman, which I mentioned on a previous podcast, and uh -huh. it's one I've seen. Uh, you get various, like, you, again, the police procedurals. Like, CSI was really popular for a while there, and you had a yes. bunch of other ones, like, trying to... <laughs> mimic it or stuff that came before and stuff like that yeah the novels like you mentioned i mean various others like movies that are like noirs kind of fall into this category i was gonna bring that up next yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then and, you know you got video games um like adventure games have been not all of them are actually i'd have to explain that genre term point and click <laughs> adventure games is maybe a better <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, you get some of those that are, uh, like, detective fiction, and all of them kind of, like, take a mode that's easily, like, detective-y, so that's a thing. Um, which, uh, point-and-click adventure, if you're not familiar, is like, oh god, I don't know how to describe it concisely. <laughs> is it like where you pick, like, one path over another kind of thing? That's choose-your-own-adventure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which there's like definitely some influence in some adventure games from that, but that's not like the thing. So, uh, po well, point and click's also like an evolution of uh, text adventures and a lot of modern adventure games you wouldn't call point and clicks. And I'm getting to a whole genre discussion in <laughs> lieu of actually yeah. describing the thing, but basically they're kind of like so you inhabit a character or characters and you go through like a story and the point is to like it's often a mystery um but not always and the point is is you're like solving puzzles and talking to characters on the way to like progress through the plot and you do that by like you know in the most like common iterations either like typing stuff into a text box to like look at thing or pick up thing or talk to person or by clicking on them and then you uh... have a set of options to like talk to them or to like interact with an object i got you and you have little puzzles like you have to find this one item to give to a person so they'll do this other thing you want and you progress through that to see a story ah okay hopefully that made some deal of sense i mean i got it <laughs> so do you like those uh point and click adventure games yeah somewhat i haven't played too too many yeah, there's definitely some that are, you know, uh, detective fiction, so I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, for any of these, like, I have to be in the mood for it. Because sometimes I find, like, especially the TV shows, I feel like they're either, like, I remember CSI used to be kind of, like, like, some episodes were good and then some were just, like, so outrageous and, like, the yeah. one-liners <laughs> were, like, so funny, you know? Like, it was just hilarious. Like, you know, hilarious stuff, but, um, not meant to be hilarious, but <laughs> I was just like, this is so goofy. But sometimes, um, you know, I enjoy it. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. And, and I was started to say that I think some of them tend to be like gory, like violent. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I don't like that. So I don't like to like think of like people hurting people and that kind of thing. 
So if I'm getting into it, I like more of like a heist kind of situation where like <laughs> nobody's getting hurt, but you're trying to figure out like who did it kind of thing. Or you're yeah. like you're at the point of view, like what the criminals are doing and how they're getting away with it. And, um, you know, like that kind of thing. But I don't like, you know, let's search for the serial killer and figure out who it is kind of detective stuff, you know. But I think like it's still a hugely popular genre. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, it's funny to me that there are so many TV shows, specifically about the TV shows, there's so many of them. Right, yeah. That it's, it's like, you know, sometimes I'll be scrolling through, like, whatever streaming service, and I'm like, I don't want to watch this. Like, <laughs> is there anything else? Like, is there anything without violence and, like, you know, that kind of stuff? You know, so, not that I don't, I mean, like, you know, I guess violence has a place in storytelling, maybe, but I'm just sometimes like if I'm watching at night, it'll give me like nightmares, you know, so yeah. I try to steer clear of that. But, um, but there's yeah, a it's quote in uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead about this. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't think I can do it from memory. I haven't even seen that movie or read the uh, source, uh, but it's something like, uh, we can do you love and blood without the rhetoric. We can do you rhetoric and blood without the love yes and we can do all do you all three concurrently or consecutively <laughs> but we can't do you love and rhetoric without the blood uh, blood is compulsory you see oh uh, i mean they're not uh lying about that huh <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah but then like you get into um you know sometimes i really do enjoy like the books and then other times I'm like, I don't want that something that mysterious. Or sometimes I'll start reading one and I think it's good. And then it becomes like kind of creepy and scary, you know? Oh, yeah. And I don't like that either. So it's like, you got to be careful. For me, you got to be careful with, <laughs> you know, what you're getting into. <laughs> but um, I think the like, the noir ones, like the, um, didn't we just talk about um, Death on the Nile? Yeah. Yeah, like that kind of style in that it's it's kind of a who done it type of thing and it's um I don't know how you like describe that, I guess, but those I think I like those. Um I think those are are interesting and even though there is some violence to them, it's not like, you know, I think the focus isn't on the violence. You know what I mean? Mhm. Mm yeah, I can definitely see what you mean about, like, the CSIs, you know, yes. where they focus a lot on, like, gory details. Yeah, it's like, this body got mangled. Right. <laughs> air conditioning fan or something, of, yeah. It's yeah, like... close-ups of stuff and, like... Yeah. I mean, because that, that one in particular is focused on, like, the crime scene investigation part, you know, like, yes. the science-y part, so they really want to look at and pick apart the details, so... Yeah, and, like, the details are, like, that is interesting. You know, I think a lot of kids, like, at one point decide they want to go into, like, forensics because it's so interesting, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But, like, but I think they get a little too, like, it's so goofy. Like, because I, I just remember Travis used to watch those shows, like, when they first came out. And, and while they were entertaining, we would just, like, laugh about it, you know, because it's, like, so goofy. But I mean, it's still, I think, I feel like people still watch it, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think with uh, TV shows in particular, they make a really good, like, uh, detective fiction and makes for a really good, um, like, TV format because you have the central character or characters that play the detective that you can have, like, and then, you know, you can do a mystery every week and that makes for really good, like, a. Uh, procedural content yeah you know you really get to like have a new thing you're introduced to every week and you have a good structure going yeah there's always a new story you know to unfold so i think i mean it's a great formula and people love it obviously so i think it's good but um i just think you know i kind of get tired of the the cop shows because it's like oh there's drama on the force and like <laughs> this partner is like you know, falling in love with this partner. And you know what I mean? Like, it's super, like, to me, it's just like, you know, it's not about, like, the crime necessarily. It's about the drama on the force. Yeah. And I'm kind of just like, I don't really, I'm not really into that. And like I said, I think, like, you know, 
I like it more from the point of view of, like, the criminals, I think. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's kind of a different genre, though. <laughs> it is, yeah, but it's, like, you know, the perfect crime and, like, kind of watching the, you know, the detectives or whoever trying to figure it out and, you know, but they get away with it or not, you know, either way. But um, I think from that point of view, I like that better. Yeah, but I think you're right. The detective, you know, genre is mostly typically from the point of view of those investigating or trying to figure <laughs> out the mystery. Yes, that's why it's called the detective genre. <laughs> right, yeah, but I, I like from the other point of view, like, how'd they get away with that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of them that I do like, you know, I... I just recently, like, I guess several months ago now, um, and I can't remember if we talked about this on the podcast or not, but I read this book called Why is for Yesterday, and uh, I don't remember who the author is, but it was, I didn't realize, um, I think I bought it from, like, a library book sale, and I didn't realize that it was, like, a series, um, but I only read the one book, but it was this girl or I guess woman who was a detective, like a like a PI kind of person, but who would solve like these kinds of mysteries. And she had like somebody going after her. I feel like that's always like kind of the subplot of these detective things that like there's always like um, a threat to that person specifically. You know what I mean? I can't think of any off like the top of my head. Like they're investigating, but then but... like the criminal turns on them. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, and um. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that either. <laughs> I'm kind of going like, okay, you know, I guess it adds more drama. Like you're, you're trying yeah. to figure out the crime before they get to you, you know? Yeah. It sounds like you don't like it <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. Okay. I mean, I like the mystery <laughs> and I like trying to figure it out. And I like how there's always like, plot twist like there's some yeah you know uh how you have to really you know it's not the superficial clues that are gonna give you the answer it's always like you know a logical you know kind of like connecting the dots type of thing that'll get you the answer and i like that whole thing but i just think it has to be like a specific type of like detective like I don't know, plot for me to actually like it. So I guess I do. I really enjoy it, but only in very particular circumstances. <laughs> yeah. A little picky about that. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, for me, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite genres, but yeah. I generally like it. Like, I wouldn't specifically seek it out, but like, I'm not going to ever say no to a piece of detective fiction for being detective fiction, you know? Yeah. I mean, I do like like the movies like like i said the death on the nile and like knives out oh or, yeah crap um, i forgot about know, like, that <laughs> yeah like right do you yeah those kinds of things i like those because it's a different style of movie than i think is the norm you know like i guess in a way like it's not as popular as i guess you don't have as many that come out like that you yeah, know yeah especially these days yeah, and so I think I like those because they're different, and, you know, I feel like they're a little more old school, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about them. So I do, I guess in certain, <laughs> like I said, certain situations, I do like the detective genre. Um, I really like those old school, like, Sherlock Holmes, like, Agatha Christie type of, of stories, um, whether it's a show or a movie or a book. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention Columbo in my examples. That's a big one. Oh! People love Columbo. I have another example, too, by the way. Um, so Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, yeah, he's got something like that, I'm right? a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe, yeah. Like, I have, um, you know, a few books of the collected stories, and those, and those, funny enough, those also sometimes will give me, like, nightmares for me yeah, at well. night. Yeah, <laughs> well. I get creeped out. <laughs> They are kind of creepy sometimes. <laughs> they are creepy, but I have always liked Edgar Allan Poe, like, since I started reading. And it's it's funny because they are creepy stories, but he was kind of, like, I guess credited with being, like, the first detective stories. And I, I'm sure, like, he's not really, but I guess maybe the first recorded, 
ones. But I just looked up and uh, The Murders in the Rue Morgue was published in April 1841. And so that's like, you know, I'm sure he wasn't the first one, like I said, but that is one of the early writers that we have that's still popular in modern day, I guess, um, to have the detective genre. And so there's some other ones. Let's see. Like he had the fictional detective, um, C. Auguste Dupin. And that was in The Mystery of Marie Roget and The Purloined Letter. And those were both 1845. So, I mean, Hmm. that's pretty, like, those stories, I think, were the precursor to, like, whole detective novels. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I feel like, and a lot of his things are, like, you know, mystery kind of things. You know, some of them are just, you know, just creepy in general. But... (laughs) But I've always enjoyed his writing. Yeah. So, uh, you want to get into some ones we've personally seen or read or what have you? Yeah. So, uh, Sherlock Holmes, what of those have you experienced? Oh gosh, so I've only read probably just a couple of Sherlock Holmes ones. Um, don't even ask me, like, (laughs) which ones. Yeah. I feel like I should get more into those, though. Like, I think I would enjoy them. I've only read a few for school. Yeah. So I, I'm not. I'm right there with you. Yeah, I think, um... And then, like, of course I've read some Agatha Christie, as I mentioned, like, and then there were none. Mm-hmm. That's the only one that, like, comes to my mind. But I know there's, like, a bunch of them <laughs> that I've... Yeah. ...read or watched as a movie or as a show... You know what? Uh, Sherlock Holmes adaptations have you seen? Because I've seen quite a few of those. Okay, so I did see the um, I guess I don't know. Was it called just Sherlock? The BBC one. Yes. Yeah. So I watched that. I guess maybe the first season. I don't know that I watched longer than that, but th- I thought that was pretty good. I th- I feel like there's been so many, and I oh, just yeah. I'm trying to. Think of what I have seen and what I haven't seen. So I've seen uh, BBC Sherlock. I thought that was quite bad, but the, the early seasons were at least fun some of the time. <laughs> yeah, I th- like I said, I think I only watched one season. Um, and I really honestly just like watched it like when Travis had it on. So uh, I, yeah. I didn't even catch like the full series probably. I could see that being a more enjoyable experience than the whole series honestly. yeah exactly yeah yeah it wasn't bad but i think i <laughs> this sounds so superficial but i think i got tired of like how fast they would talk oh, <laughs> like, yeah. and i would just be like oh okay like come on but i i wasn't there a movie yes uh there was uh robert downey jr one yes i, I saw that, that was the 2010s one. it might have been the 2000s i was gonna it w- i was gonna say it was like more recent yes you know and i I know i saw that I, I thought that was pretty good if i remember correctly i've never seen it so i'm also i'm really bad at like remembering movies like i'll <laughs> yeah. watch a movie and then you you'd be like well, was it good and i'm like uh, i think i think it was <laughs> i don't really i remember i don't know why but anyway yeah so i'm trying to think what else i had like what else I've seen? Well, I can talk about some and maybe that'll refresh your memory a bit. Yeah, maybe so. Okay, so I've seen all of Elementary, which is, uh, I forget who did it, but, um, it's a Sherlock Holmes adaptation, American one. It was running concurrently with the, uh, BBC one. Was that good? Yeah, I liked it. It was never, like, you know, the greatest thing on TV, but it was a solid show. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, it's decent if you like, uh, it's a bit more on the, like, police procedural end of things, but... Uh, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> yeah, but if, if you if you like detective fiction, you might enjoy it. I might check it out. I've seen Miss Sherlock, which is a Japanese adaptation, where, obviously, Sherlock is a woman. Oh! And, yeah, that one's really interesting. It's very hit or miss, but when it hits, it's very good. I think... One of the episodes is one of the best pieces of detective fiction I've ever seen. Really? I thought it was very well written. Ooh. You have to tell me which episode that is and I'll go watch it. 
Oh god, I think it's like the it's only six episodes long, so Okay. So I should just watch it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's all I've seen for T V. And there's games of uh Sherlock Holmes. I don't think I've ever played one, but I have seen a few like playthroughs of some of them, and those are of varying qualities. They're kind of interesting sometimes. Yeah. Just depends on the game. Those are usually adventure games. It's a thing that fits with it. Yeah. Um, did you I, um, think of any? Well, isn't Enola Holmes like a spinoff series? Of Have you heard of that one? I have not. Okay, so, um, hold on, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, I remember seeing that, but I think it's like his sister or something. Like Sherlock Holmes' sister. Okay. A 2020 mystery film based on the first book in the young adult fiction series of the same name. The story is about the teenage sister of the already famous Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Using her sleuthing skills to outsmart big brother Sherlock and help a runaway lord. <sighs> Interesting. Yeah, so I've heard like that. Um, well, I don't know anybody who's actually watched it, but <laughs> it, it looks decent. Uh, <laughs> it got like some some good like reviews, so I don't know if that would be good. I think Millie Bobby Brown is in that one. I like her. So I don't know. Maybe I'll check that one out. Maybe I'll like it better from like her point of view. Yeah, I might check that out. I've seen quite a few Sherlock Holmes things. Yeah. I feel like I've seen a lot. I just can't think of any off the top of my yeah. head. <laughs> That's how it is with this sort of thing. Yeah, but and I always like, as I've said, like I like um like the mystery books, um and I like the detective, you know, from that point of view. But it's like I have to only read them like few and far between. Like I have, to, I'll read one and then I'll read like some fluff, you know some like summer beach read kind of thing and then like you know eventually go back to like a mystery like detective kind of stuff but I think for me when I read like those kinds I really enjoy more of a like psychological thriller uh. which can also fit into you know the the detective genre but I like the like kind of more you know I think they're more interesting hmm uh, well, outside of Sherlock Holmes, any other things you've watched or read or what have you that you want to bring up? Well, like I said, I know there's a bunch of, like, Agatha Christie <laughs> adaptations. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm trying to think of, like, what... Obviously, Death on the Nile was one, um... But which other ones? Like, Murder on the Orient Express. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever seen that. There's been several of those over yeah. the years, I feel like, movie-wise. But there's just so many. Let me see. Um, let's see. Movies. Okay, so I I don't know if I saw Murder on the Orient Express. I need to watch that one. I think that would be a good one. That's uh, her most famous, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and there's been several of those over the years, but I want to see the newer one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm looking at this list. I don't really know. You know, Ten Little <laughs> yeah. Indians, The Mirror Cracked, A Caribbean Mystery, Murder is Easy, Appointment with Death. Like, I don't, I haven't seen any of those. Um, but they might be good. <laughs> they might be good. But those kinds, I think, like, I really enjoyed, like, Death of the Nile and, like, that style. So I'd probably, I'd probably like them. Yeah. Crooked House. I don't know what that one is. 2017. Hmm. Never heard of that one. Uh, well, for me, The Batman, which I mentioned previously. Yes. Uh, Detective Pikachu, which uh, is a Pokemon movie about a Pikachu who's a detective. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> is it good? It's okay. It, it felt like a very basic, like, uh modern action movie just with some like detective themings i also did not like how they made the pokemon like the the way they designed them i just i, I didn't like them <laughs> <laughs> they look horrible to me i want them to be little flat shaded cartoon things like they made them very realistic looking like having realistic fur oh, that's and in creepy. the original like games and every other like set of media uh they 
are very, like, flat-shaded and very cartoonish. Right. <laughs> and I didn't like the realism. Oh. But uh, Scooby-Doo counts. Yeah, Scooby-Doo. I can't believe we neglected to mention <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Like, absolutely. Um, I will say Scooby-Doo used to creep me out, though, huh. back in the day, like when I was a kid. I don't remember if I got creeped out by it or not. Well, it had, like, ghosts and, like, yeah. you know, monsters and, like, really well, creepy music. Well, never real ghosts and monsters. <laughs> I know, but as a child, I was like, oh, creepy. Like, I still don't like creepy music. Oh, yeah. Like, in movies, like, atmospheric stuff. I'm just like, no, I don't <laughs> like it. It creeps me out. Yeah, you've mentioned that before. <laughs> it all came from that. Like, Inspector Gadget. Hello. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that, though, so... Oh, that was that one got a little creepy too. Did it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, for I mean, me, I've never seen it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then of course there's video games like Heavy Rain, which I haven't played, but I've seen. Um, Indigo Prophecy, which is by the same developer as Heavy Rain, and oh. is kind of detectivey in certain parts. Both of those games are bad, though. <laughs> really. I just mentioned Heavy Rain because I brought it up on a previous podcast. <laughs> there, there's got to be stuff I'm, like, I've either watched or played myself that I just can't think of uh, in the games department. And there's tons of side quests that, like, I just am blanking on all of a sudden. But I know that is a thing that, like, in some games, if they're the kind of game that has, like, extra, like, side stuff... That they'll do, like, a random, like, detective bit where you have to solve a mystery of some kind. Yeah. I generally like those when they happen. They're a nice little thing. But, again, can't really remember any right now. <laughs> yeah. I, but I do, I feel like um, these types of, like, games and shows and movies and books are kind of like palate cleansers. <laughs> like, you like to look at them or play them every once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um and another game i wanted to mention it's the uh ace attorney series oh. which is a popular like video game you know it's had quite a bit of like memes and stuff made about it uh and i watched a playthrough of it semi-recently the like first three games in the series and uh you play as a defense attorney but it's really like a piece of detective media because throughout the course of like defending your client you find out who the real perpetrator is mm. and like it's split into two halves you have your uh court half but you also have your uh like investigation half where you're like bebopping about trying to find like clues and stuff to figure out who really did it so you can uh determine your client innocent oh that's kind of cool yeah it's a bit of a neat game yeah um, I thought of a couple of other, like, newer shows, actually. So, I, I think I talked about White Lines before. So, that's, um, I don't know that it's necessarily detective fiction, but it kind of fits under, like, the, the whole mystery, like, genre. And it's, like, a sister trying to figure out what happened to her brother like, years ago, and so, um, that one was a newer one that's based in Ibiza on Netflix. That sounds kind of detective-y. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, it's definitely, like, she's trying to figure out what happened and, like, put together clues and, like, talk to different people, but, um, I really enjoyed that one. That was good, and, of course, I love, like, the scenery of Ibiza, or as she says on the show, Ibiza. <laughs> And then there's, um, have you seen the show Elite? That's also on Netflix. That's a, um, I, I think it's a Spanish show, maybe. Um, yeah, because it's set in Spain, obviously. <laughs> I want to say I've heard of it, but I don't know. Yeah, so that one is good. I like that one, too. Um, that was, it's like, there's a few, like, kids, it's a high school based. And these, a few kids are, like, kind of, like, working class you know, families that come from working class families and they go to this private, like, elite school and um, somebody dies or somebody gets killed and it's like they're trying to figure out what happened. So those are two that I know that I've seen that I thought were very good. It's a more modern, you know, 
Um, but not necessarily like a detective. It's just people trying to figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. And then I think I might have also talked about recently um, the books that I read, um, One of Us is Lying and One of Us is Next. I just read those books and those are kind of like, you know, who would happen, like who is doing this, who's pulling the strings kind of thing that they're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like the ones that it's not necessarily like the detective or the police. It's like other people trying to figure it out. Right, yeah. Like it's uh, still a detective fiction, but they're not like a formal detective. Like that's not their job. Yes, and I guess... And speaking about this for <laughs> this whole podcast, I finally realized, like, that's what I like. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely part of the genre, you know? You don't gotta be a police officer to play the role of detective. Right, exactly. And that's, I enjoy, like, those, like, regular people trying to figure out this mystery and what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, something I wanted to bring up about detective fiction is that, uh, there's... A lot of murder in these, and I think yes. it would be interesting if, you know, there were more cases that were different crimes, because I think that's, like, really, you know, it would add some variety. And maybe it's just the things I've seen, but murder seems to be the go-to. Yes. Which, I mean, you know, that's fairly obvious. It gives you, like, very obvious stakes. You know, you know where you stand, it's a very serious crime, and it gives you an easy place to set a mystery because you know you can't just ask the party who's dead who killed them right and i think it also adds like the looming threat of like is someone else going to be murdered yeah. or is the detective going to be murdered you know yeah that can definitely be a part of it and yeah i just think you know if at least some of the time you know a lot of these shows or books or whatever would go for uh Something a bit different, like, you know, you were mentioning heists earlier, but maybe yes. like a really weird heist where it's like, how did they do this? Like, it seems impossible for yes. them to do it and like really unraveling that. Or maybe they steal like a really weird thing. Yes. Oh, wait, that reminded me, there was a show that I did really enjoy, White Collar, and that was uh, FBI, like, an investigating white collar crimes. Hmm. And I like those because it was less of murder, violence. It was more stolen art and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that might be kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, elementary, which I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. That was like, I think every single episode in that but one dealt with a murder. Mm -hmm. So like, by the end of it, I was like, you know, this could have done with a few more miscellaneous sort of <laughs> crimes. Yeah, right. Like, just to add some more spice. Like, I'm not bothered by the violence part of it, but it's like, you know, <laughs> it'd be nice to get a different taste sometimes. Yeah. I guess I just, I don't like, like, the tragedy, you know, like, yeah, people mourning their death and, like, all this. Yeah, I don't like that part of it. Like, it's like, I don't want to think about sad things, but, <laughs> I mean, somebody steals, like, a high-profile piece of art. Yeah, let's figure that out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like. Like, those kinds of things. Yeah, that's certainly, uh... I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess we've kind of hit a, a end then if we're... Yeah, well, it is kind of funny that, um, you know, the more we talked about it, the more I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this one, I remember <laughs> that one. Um, but I'm like, yeah, I, I'm thinking earlier in the podcast, so I was like, I know I've yes, like, yeah. watched some more things or read more things, but I just like wasn't thinking of it. But as we talked through it, yeah. it's like, yeah, I actually have I read and watched a lot of those things like in the past couple of years. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I've, I've played, uh, yeah, just off the top of my head, I've remembered uh, The Wolf Among Us, which is a game based on a comic oh. where you play as a detective who's a werewolf. <laughs> That's cool. Well, it's uh the comic's based on like what if fairy tales were real. Yeah. But they were like, you know, realistic people. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, not like, you know, um I'm trying to like Pinocchio's still a puppet, but like Okay. I don't even know if Pinocchio was in it, but like <laughs> uh they act like real people instead of fairy tale people. I got you. Yeah. I think that would be probably interesting. Yeah, and, uh, 
again, like like you were saying, yeah, like any time we have a like talking about an open ended thing, I'm always scrambling to remember <laughs> stuff. Yes, I know. Like you think I'd be more prepared, but <laughs> something about being prompted for it just like erases all your memories. I know, isn't that funny? But uh, but I think you know we got a lot of examples today, and so and it actually. <laughs> I always say this, but I'm like, I'm going to go watch, like, <laughs> what was the movie I mentioned earlier? It's The Crooked House or, uh -huh. um, oh, Death on the Orient Express. I'm yes, going to go watch yeah. that. Or Murder. Murder. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm going to go watch that now. Like, <laughs> it makes me like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this kind of stuff. Let me go watch something or read something, you know? Yeah, if you don't mind uh, subtitles, uh, I think Miss Sherlock is worth the watch. Miss Sherlock. Okay, yeah, I don't mind subtitles. I watch subtitles stuff all the time. I mean, I don't know where you'd find it, but, uh, yeah. Maybe on the dark web. <laughs> dark kinda, web. Uh, uh, pirated copy. Piracy is not the dark web. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's eight episodes? I thought it was only six. Oh, you got a, some more watching to do. No, I watched all of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it might be a bit, like, creepy in parts, though. I don't know how that'll fare for uh, you. Alright, so, daytime watching only. Yeah, um, cause the- uh, I'll spoil something for if you don't mind. Okay. The big villain of the series is this, like, former psychologist, like, psychology PhD or something. Mm-hmm. And their theory was, like, what if you could make an ordinary person turn to a life of crime? Ooh. And, like, the thing is, though, is the way this is done, and this is presented as, like, this new, like, dark information that makes them a criminal mastermind, but the way this is done is that they just form a cult. Like, it's literally just a cult. A cult? Oh, no. And, and it's like, this is already a thing that exists. I don't know why this right. is being presented as, like, some new threat that this big bad came up with, but... <laughs> that's kind of funny yeah uh i guess uh we have anything else to say on this subject uh no except that i have some some more shows added to my watch list so <laughs> <laughs> well i'll just take us out so this has been beach view um thank you for listening and join us next time bye, bye.